Hello everybody, this is Seethercord of Seethercord Games, and welcome to my post-commentated speedrun of my, I think I explained that wrong, my post-commentary uh, speedrun of Ed and the Misadventures in 43 minutes and 27 seconds. This was played on a Nintendo GameCube console, not emulated, and it was done in real time, and we're just gonna get started. So just to quickly get off to start, uh, the timer for the speedrun community of this game, the timer starts once uh, the first level loads rather than when you press start on the file. And um, I wanted to put it out of the way because of the fact we need to. And this is an any percent speed run, so I'm not going for 100%, just like get to the end credits, beat the final boss. And uh, the timing stops when you put the final blow on the final boss of this game. Yeah, so uh, if you didn't guys didn't notice, this game is made up of six scams, or that's what they call them instead of levels in this game. And in, and um, there's also two bonus levels, but to beat the game, you just gotta beat the main six to get to the ending. Uh, the other two bonus levels are acquired when you collect a costume piece from these sandboxes over there. Uh, uh, three, once you get like three specific ones of the six, you unlock one of each of the two levels. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, one ability in this game that you use to really uh, get fast speed in this game is the batter ed ability, which Ed uses once you swap between both Eddie, Double D, and Ed. Uh, Ed's ability makes him run super fast. Double D's ability makes him like be kind of like doing a trampoline called a trample Ed. And Eddie's ability is the Tower of Eddie, where um, they all get on top of each other and Eddie's on top. Usually used to uh, pick up stuff or hide behind telephone poles. So yeah. Now we just gotta like go and throw these uh, squirrels inside the uh, window to get Sarah and Jimmy to get out. Uh, if I can explain for a second, the reason why I'm playing this game for a speedrun is because I want to try to get into the speedrun community a little bit, and I thought it's best to not play a personal favorite game of mine. Uh, it's try and probably just play something new, and also try playing something that uh, that's short and doesn't have like multiple hours uh, to play through. I can beat this game. I'm pretty sure anyone can like do it any percent speed around this game in under or a little bit over an hour uh, after a few playthroughs. I, um, I spent at least like a week or two practicing before I recorded this. And this was recorded about a week ago, which um, it's on my uh, third side channel, which I never really promote it because it's more private of my uh, no commentary let's play channel. Um, Valerex, V-A-L-E-R-E-X, which I mean, you can also watch the no commentary version of this on that channel, link in the description down below. And uh, this is also placed as 16th on the any percent category on speedrun.com for this game, which uh, speedrun.com is a uh, website that has all the speedrun placings, which most people in the speedrun community use that one mainly, and there's other websites like Zelda speedruns, uh, speed demos archive, things like that. So uh, yeah, um... I'm the first one to upload a speedrun on this game within like the past year or so because this game isn't as popular uh, to speedrun as it was about two years ago. And uh, with that, we now have completed the first stage. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm just skipping the cutscenes right here. Uh, by the way, guys, remember that um, I'm just like watching this footage. This is a this is a post recording, uh, so I'm just commentating over what I uh, have already. Now we got the second stage, Pin the Tail on the Ed, which is basically Ed, Ed, and Eddie um, trying to get to Jimmy's birthday party, and they won't let him in, so they're going through the sewers. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I do use the batter Ed ability a lot to get into faster areas. Uh, sometimes you just need to walk faster because it takes a little bit, but uh, yeah. Um, the reason why I'm so, uh, I'm not really that high up in the leaderboards and only 16th place out of like 30 something places in the any percent category is because I don't really use glitches yet. I might try to speedrun this game in the future if I want to like attempt to learn the glitches, but uh, yeah. Um, you can skip this whole segment by uh, using double D to like kind of clip through there because you can't, there's a lot of clipping in this game which is like going through a wall and such. Uh, there's going to be one place coming up where we have to... Uh, or have to uh, like let Eddie jump on top of Ed and then like he kind of and then use like a first person perspective when Double D uses his slingshot to kind of like push Ed through the wall and then we switch Ed to Ed while he's through the wall and then we make him go into the batter Ed ability to get both Eddie and Double D on the other side as well. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty much doing uh, to give a little bit of an update also to people who are on this gaming channel to know why I'm kind of doing some more off stuff. Don't think that the other series that I'm still doing, like Spongebob and such, are like done. It's just that with not being able to record or having that much time to record, 
right now for the next few weeks because I'm still in the process of moving to the new house. It's uh, it's harder to really like get time to record that, but I want to do some of this stuff for a little bit as well um, while we wait. So yeah, stay tuned. It's still going on. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, yeah, kill those rats, which are annoying. Um, yeah, this is like uh, my third full like time speedrun. Like I've speedrun this game a couple times, but this is like the third time that I've actually uh, uh, used an actual timer and got specific timings on it. I think my uh, my first time or my first attempt where I timed it, I was about like 50 or so minutes, and this one's gone down to 43:27. Yeah. Um, I think if I still, I think I might try to do some more glitchless attempts with this. Uh, so that way I can get to a sub 40, which in the speedrunning terms, like sub 40 means like under 40 minutes or like sub 20 is under 20 minutes kind of thing like that. So yeah, I think I could like, I think like a near perfect glitchless any percent is like under, is like just under 40 minutes maybe. I'm not exactly sure because this run only has like a few mistakes, like that one being such. This has always been kind of tricky whenever I tried doing it. You have to like align it well because Double D's trample ed ability is kind of weird. Uh, yeah, it's uh, really bad, and I keep fucking it up. <laughs> oh my god, I'm wasting so much time. Yeah. Hmm, this should work. Yeah, there's a lot of um, reused audio, foot reused audio clips from the voice actors in this game, which uh, if you didn't know, um, Ed and Eddie was one of my personal favorite shows growing up. It was my favorite Cartoon Network show by far. Uh, it's currently not my favorite uh, cartoon slash anime of all time because uh, as I got older I watched a lot more stuff and uh, I didn't have a Nickelodeon growing up as a kid so I only watched Cartoon Network so I missed out on a lot of Nickelodeon's best stuff. But still, uh, I do believe that Ed Nitty is the best Cartoon Network show of at least the 2000s because um, it is the longest running Cartoon Network show lasting 10 years. Um, it's pretty impressive. And it has uh, some amazing voice work, like with uh, Samuel Vincent uh, doing the uh, voice of Double D and Matt Hill doing the voice of Ed, which both of them, I believe they both starred in one anime, I think called uh, Gundam Seed, I think that was what it is. Yeah, both of them were in that. Uh, those two voice actors do a lot of voice acting for animes and such. And uh, the voice actor of Eddie, Tony Sampson, uh, actually retired from voice acting to go work in the, uh, I think, the oil mining industry in Canada once, he was, once the show ended. I think he did, so... Yeah, he retired. I just know he doesn't do voice acting anymore since Eddie. Yeah. But, um... If my skills are correct, yeah, so now we're going, going to be going upstairs or out of the sewer to Jimmy's backyard. Now. It's pretty cool. And we got these really weird shaped piñatas. Anyway. The only annoying thing about when you're trying to get into your, uh, trans your um, three dynamic ability is that uh, if one of the Eds isn't in a close vicinity to the other because like the AI can be a little stupid because uh, it won't follow you you're not able to really like you can't really do it and it sucks but uh that's all right we don't really have that issue right now to be honest um yeah I never I didn't really experience that issue only like besides like one time and now uh the canker sisters came out of the piñatas and we gotta drop beehives piñatas and even fucking refrigerators on top of uh marie canker which if you didn't know lee canker is the redhead one red curly haired one uh, marie canker is the uh the blue haired goth one and uh and uh may canker is the blonde dumb one dropping a fucking refrigerator on top of her head goddamn park not violence is best Time for some smooching. <laughs> I can't get over that. Yeah. I gotta wait for the beehive. And we're done with scam two. We're already a third of the way through the game. And it's only like eight minutes and fifty seconds. That's pretty cool. Alright, so uh next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going into the first of two um two-parter scams where this game is split into two parts which we're going to be going to um so yeah you have to follow the arrows kind of thing i don't know why but it reminds me of sim city a little bit but yeah the purpose of this scam is that uh ed ed and eddie have to race to the candy store to get some jawbreakers that are for free and the candy store is about to close so they gotta hurry there and this is where we get introduced to the tower of ed ability eddie ability um 
But the thing is about this one is that this is based off of an episode and kind of rips off its idea, so yeah. And here we're going to have to um, get uh, Jimmy's dolls from the trees by using the Tower of Edibility. But you want to kill these squirrels quickly so that way they don't um, screw you up. And uh, yeah, if you actually... Um, if you drop if you if you drop the 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 stuffed animals not within the sandbox, then you die. And you have to start over. And um, I don't want to spoil how funny the freaking um, the uh, death and or the death animation is in this game because it's really funny. Um, but yeah, this game wasn't that well received back when it first came out. I think the reviews were initially like mixed between pe critics and fans of the show. Like, uh, the voice acting is still great. It gives, like, a lot of the charm that a lot of people who enjoy the show will love. But as a game on its own, it's, like, it's mediocre, to be fair. But I, I still have a lot of fun playing it, personally. Yeah. It's okay if you... I, I, I'm someone that I can still enjoy games, even though if most people don't like them, or even if they're not good quality games. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, now we got to climb up here again. And I almost fell off. Holy shit. Uh, this game came out around, I think, the year 2005, and that uh, was near the end of the show's run. That was like, uh, the show ended in 2009, and since this game came out in 2005, this was near the end of the show's run, uh, when the last couple episodes were aired, so um, you kind of like get like a full scope of everything they've shown throughout the series, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so now, oh, we gotta go and get Double D up here and make him jump up there to uh, get the tractor. There is another glitch you can do right here to where you can just skip that whole tractor scene, but I didn't know how to pull it off yet. You kind of like have to um, jump um, on the side and like kind of like slip and slide your way over there without falling into the water, and it's doable, but it's kind of hard. But uh, yeah, um, the world record holder for this game in both the any percent category, and I think he has the 100% uh, category re world record too. His name is uh, Kanasumi. He played this game in HDQ 2016, I think, and uh, he did a really good job. And uh, he has a lot of uh, glitch tutorials for this game, so you can um, definitely check that out. And I did skip the cutscene, but it's really funny because uh, the character models in this game are really awful, in my opinion. Like, just look at Eddie's, but Kevin's model is the absolute worst in the game. <laughs> and me and my fr friends make memes out of, like, how terrible his model looks. <laughs> Dorks! But anyway... Now we got a really dumb objective, to be honest, where we have to uh, uh, throw these basketballs at these trash cans and knock them over for some reason. Kevin wants us to do that. Kevin. Anyway. Yeah, we have to do it before the timer runs out also. Yeah, it's a pretty dumb objective, if you ask me. No purpose, really. Just knock them over and make a mess. And there's Kevin. And now we gotta get through here and we gotta, like, force Johnny to be pummeled and stung to death by a bunch of bees. They got me, Plank! Anyway, Johnny was always the weirdest fucking character for me and he was really creepy. But he was still funny, but he was just creepy overall with Plank and shit. And now we're entering the second half of this level. Um, yeah, the second half of this uh, scam is basically Eddie gets a jawbreaker that's covered in foot powder, and he's allergic to foot powder, apparently. Um, the show never indicated that prior, so they just kind of made it up for this this part of the game. But uh, yeah, we just now have to basically uh, sneak him home before, uh, the, um, before the other kids in the cul-de-sac uh, witness it, uh, or sees him. And there's a bulldog. We gotta like hide from the bulldog because he's really aggressive and I keep fucking it up. I've actually never had as much trouble dealing with this guy. I usually always get on my first try, but when I finally record for the fucking speed run, I fuck it up. Anyway. Nice doggy. Nice doggy. <laughs> yeah. And now we gotta avoid Johnny. And Johnny's character model is also equally as disturbing as both Eddie and Kevin's. Uh, Double D looks more like a sock pocket, sock sock puppet, in my opinion. And now we gotta hide behind here. You can, um, Johnny does have a blind spot when he um, looks at looks at that manhole cover. You can just sneak past him, which I do. But there's also like another one. But you kind of have to like run to Double D and like shoot the bell coming up here and then run past him again quickly. But it's kind of hard, so you gotta like practice that quite a bit to do it. And uh, come on, now we gotta shoot the bell and we gotta get Naz away from here, which is strangely Naz's only real like 
appearance in this game, like, fully. Like, the show always kind of, like, put Nas to the side, but, yeah. And I always fuck that up because they uh, force the camera to change and it screws you up a little bit. Huh. Now, we gotta go over here. And there's actually a really funny part when it comes to uh, uh, hiding from Jimmy. Uh, we're gonna have to throw these paint, these uh, cans of paint at him, and they automatically just like hover towards him. But there's something really funny that always happens whenever you, uh, whenever you chase him. You can actually chase Jimmy. Like, look at him run. He's like, go away. <laughs> You're just chasing him. It's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> and that's the death's animation there. It just like shows dorks. <laughs> it's funny. And there they go. You can just throw an El Mondo Stink Bomb, which is Eddie's ability, which has no real purpose other than that one time, to be honest. Now we gotta hide from Kevin. And uh, you gotta turn on the tractor with Double D, because Double D's the only one in this game that has the ability to, like, um, operate the machinery and such. And open doors and crap, because he's the smart one. And uh, we just gotta, like, walk with it. And there we're done. There we go. We're done with the third level in this game. Halfway done. Yeah, you can. There is, like, a certain point where Kevin's turning, which you can just, like, time it, and then you can just, like, batter edge your way through it and just escape it. But I didn't do that for this run. Now, we're going to be moving on to the fourth uh, level in this game, which is based off of the uh, uh, the few episodes involving the Urban Rangers, which is a uh, Boy Scouts team made up of Johnny, Jimmy, Rolf, and Plank. And, uh, yeah, Ed on Arrival is what it's called. Let's go. So, uh, this episode is, uh, there's no scam involved. It's just uh, Eddie wants a badge that uh, Rolf is offering to anyone to do the obstacle course. And basically, Ed and Eddie just got to get through it. And uh, Kevin's going to try to get in their way the whole time. Uh, yeah. Um, so, we're going to just got to avoid that one plank right there that's kind of a little more animated style than the others. Uh, that one disappears if you run by it. So, yeah. There we go. Now we're gonna get double D right here to shoot that down, and then you're gonna have to do tower ready. You can't just like get all three to like walk individually. Cause they'll fall. Yeah. Now we're going to grab that. Throw that bad boy over there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty much um, nothing else really to uh, mention right now until we get through this. It's kind of the more slower part. The beginning of this level is really slow, but it gets a lot more fun later on. This level really starts to also introduce a lot of clipping through walls, which it's pretty much going to be very frequent through the rest of this game. But uh, I do not show that off yet. Maybe if I ever come back to this game in the future, uh, I'll re-record it with glitches. If you guys want that, uh, just let me know down in the comment section down below. See, so yeah, I hit the switch. Um, there's also a really crazy uh, stunt or glitch you pull off in the fifth scam of this game, or the fifth main one in this game, which makes you beat the level in literally less than like 10 seconds, which is why um, my time is so bad <laughs> compared to everyone else on the leaderboards because of the fact that uh, um, the world record for this game is like 22 minutes because one of the levels you just flat out fully skip. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. All right. Um. Yeah. My, my. Intriguing. Coming up here is another obstacle we're gonna have to do, which is like a mini game where you're gonna have to uh, hit Jimmy. There's Jimmy. <laughs> um. Yeah. He uh, he pretty much just you gotta like just smash your head on Jimmy, it's just like whack a mole. Um. You can skip this with a glitch. For a speed run where you just like do the whole wall clipping trick by like having Eddie jump on top of Ed and then double D first person perspective like pushing Ed through and you switch to Ed and you know blah blah yada 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 you know you know the whole gig I never thought about doing a 100% speed run of this game I might do that as well like a 100% glitchless run maybe uh, I don't know it just it might be a little longer to record but yeah and we open that up uh, I will not go there. I'm just going to go through the door. Yeah. 
yeah, the, still this level's kind of slow in the beginning. Like once we get through this part and then one more major obstacle part of this level, then um, then it becomes a little more fun. But yeah. So boring and slow, but yeah. <sighs> Other than that, um, we just got to uh, basically just focus on getting through the obstacle course, and that says rang dogs? I don't know what that says. I think it looked like hot dogs or something, but... Intriguing. Yeah, once again, you could clip through the wall. We didn't do that. I suck. This level in particular, for 100%, there's a jawbreaker, and uh, on yeah, over there on that wall, right over there you're about to see, it has like four colors uh, ar arranged in a way, and we have four batters you gotta put on this giant generator. And what you gotta do is you gotta get them in the right order and color, but I'm not doing that for this run. But if you want to 100%, you got to do it in the correct order, which you're about to see when you get to that wall over there. Anyway. So, yeah, we got to get green, blue, orange, and red. Carry it over here. Nice. Now we're going to get to the blue one. All these you got to pretty much just grab with the Tower of Eddie. Uh, yeah. I might also do a full let's play of this game in the future. I think it would be a nice little mini project once I get into the new house. So maybe like expect within like a month or two for me to like have a uh, full like playthrough of this game. Like 100%. It'll probably be like 10, 15 parts. So it's a short series. But maybe you guys will like that. Alrighty. And uh, last one, I always make sure to get the rats right here, so that way they don't um, cause any issues. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. So you grab the final battery, and we'll take it over here and drop it down there. Just drop a drop a low girl, drop a drop a low girl. I'll stop it. <laughs> Oh my god. So you have to get them in the order of blue, green, orange, and red. So yeah. Chicken! Oh, I never mentioned uh, these chickens. You have a little amount of time to like knock them out and then grab them and throw them so they explode and get an Easter egg. And there's like little like hints you can get or tricks. Uh, little special features. And now uh, this is like the first of two goat bosses where we're going to have to uh, do like a headbutting bo mini boss battle with Victor the goat from the show. He was pretty awesome. I love Victor. And now we gotta race Kevin. Uh, this is the first of two times, I think, in this game. Is this the first of two times, I think? No, this is the sick. Hmm. No, this is the only time in this game we race Kevin, yeah. And this is the last time I think we'll see Kevin also in this game. So, it's an epic race to the finish line. Yes, this is the end of the level, by the way. Just gotta beat him. I remember when I was really young, when I had this game, I would just, like, walk and thought I could beat it, but I always lost because I didn't know he had to batter it because I was in... I was a... Uh, an innocent child that didn't really think intuitively back then, so, yeah. I wasn't that innocent growing up, to be honest with you. I was a terrible child. <laughs> oh, man. I was exposed to a lot of, like, crazy shit on TV and seeing, like, like people get shot on, like, horror movies and shit that I watched growing up. I was, I was really badly monitored <laughs> by my parents. No disrespect to them, just my god. And there we go, we're now four levels down, just two more to go at a time of 23 minutes and about 12 seconds so far. So, all right, so um, the second to last level we're gonna get to now, Scam 5, is gonna be based off of the one episode called Honor Thy Ed, where Ed and Eddie go into a, uh, a haunted house for a dare. But this time, we're going they're going into the haunted house again to uh, get Jimmy's uh, Mr. Yum Yum doll plushy back which is a little yellow or not yellow but a little rabbit stuffed animal and um yeah get it for a quarter um there is a way to beat this level in like 10 seconds which a lot of people who do glitch runs of this game do basically um you have to just switch to double d and you kind of like have to jump over the mail place a little bit right where the kinker sisters are and right before they like try to kiss you because if they um if you don't have all they will um if you don't have all the stuff they will try to kiss you and you'll die so um, you have to jump there and then hit quickly hit the power saw and while they're doing the death animation like Double D finishes the level by uh, fixing the power saw which triggers the uh, 
the end cutscene for this level and I'm failing at going up this ladder. So yeah, I suck. <laughs> um, anyway. In your dreams. But I forgot to mention, um, the reason why uh, we have to get stuff for the Kanker Sisters because they ended up getting the uh, doll because Ed act Eddie told Ed to put the doll in there intentionally. But uh, when they, the Kanker Sisters were basically like, we won't kiss you or like rape you. But um, what you have to do is get us gifts and we'll let you have your doll back. And so, yeah. Yeah, this is probably the least enjoyable level for me, personally. It gets a lot more exciting once we get to the final level, but these last two levels are very long. Like, 20 minutes. Like, those last two levels take, like, 10 minutes each. So, yeah. And the music doesn't help at all, either. Oh, my God. <laughs> there we go. We got the uh, ship in a bottle for... For Lee, and now we gotta go and get a can of axle grease for Lee. Oh, excuse me. Um, I don't know why we have to. I don't know why she has an interest in axle grease, but okay then. Uh, yeah, just some weird like tomboy shit for them. Yeah. Avoid the spiders because they can be really annoying. Like the red squirrels and the spiders latch onto you, and you have to jump a few times to get them off, and then you gotta kill them. They're really annoying. So yeah. Now you gotta batter it on this like a dresser or this wardrobe right here, and you gotta switch to double D, hold the shift, the gear, and uh, slides open the bookshelf. Yeah, I know a lot of people might not be impressed by uh, the fact that my run is so slow compared to a lot of other people on the charts, but I just find it interesting and still a little bit impressive that I can beat the whole game in, like, less than 45 minutes, so... Yeah. Not the whole game, but, like, any percent. Still, I think it's pretty cool. A good way to start off when you're trying to get to speedruns, just doing any percent glitchless runs. And now we gotta go over here, because when you uh, hit turn that wheel... Uh, it um it raised the water so that way we can get across. And now um we just gotta batter our, at our way up here. The annoying thing with batter is that if you crash into a wall while doing it, like you uh get stunned for like two or three seconds, which uh, loses time. And then goes like, come on, get up! I'm gonna speed run. So yeah. Um, and with that we opened. The, with that we uh got the uh the the. The foldable bed, like one of those beds where like it goes into the wall kind of thing to uh, open up. And that's, I do think that's really cool. I wish I always had a bed that could just like put it up in the wall. That would be funny and cool. So we can now like do a uh, trample double D to get through the hole in the wall. And so that way we can open the door to get everyone through here. Now, I'm going to grab another one of these... Uh, more, grab one of these uh, little items here to put on the pedestal and I fell. Yeah, and you gotta avoid the um, the timing of the uh, candelabra. The giant candelabra that's just swinging for some reason. What kind of house is this? What kind of haunted house is this where like the freaking, the floor like just leads to nothing. It's just an empty abyss when the floor just breaks open. Like where are they hovering at? Like it's weird. How many stories is this freaking place? There's an elevator in this level and shit? Like what the fuck? I don't know. Yeah, video game logic, I guess, or cartoon logic. Video game, cartoon logic. Nope. Video games based on cartoons logic. <laughs> okay, so we're going to bring this to Marie, and we got two of the three gifts delivered now. Nice. Now we got to go and deliver the uh, taxidermy book for May. Uh, I don't know why she has a... Well, I was like, oh, she likes to read, but then I'm like, oh, taxidermy. That's a little weird, but... Uh, I don't have anything against people who like taxidermy. I just never found a huge interest in it, but... Sometimes it can get a little bit intense or so, but, you know, that's that's their thing. I don't enjoy it, judge, and now... They actually have a cutscene showing when they uh, got the, the elevator um, turned on, but other than that, there's not really any other cutscene in this game besides just the typical sliding the freaking bookshelf open and the whole freaking, like, putting the bed into the wall cutscene, which is makes no sense because there's no talking. I think they're just like trying to fill up stuff, maybe like on time constraints getting the game produced or something. Yeah, very average, mediocre game, but, you know. 
Oh my gosh. Ah. Da -da -da. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Duh. <laughs> I don't know why I'm singing the music too. Oh my god. But yeah, now we have to climb up all the way on this really tall room of this freaking... This is a freaking castle, guys. Come on. This isn't like a haunted house or like a house someone lived in. This is a castle. Like, it's a freaking cathedral. Like, freaking look like I'm in a church or something. Oh, well. So yeah, now we gotta grab this. Make sure we don't get hit by the candelabra that's swinging. Anyway. I wonder if there's any weird theories about this level in this game with the place... And we hit the half hour mark too, by the way. And with that, we opened up a little hole in the wall to reveal the taxidermy book for some random reason. How they were able to just, out of nowhere by chance, just have the book fall out when moving something completely unrelated. Just, okay then. Uh. Yeah, this is a game more so aimed at like younger kids, like eight year olds, six year olds and stuff. Cause I had this game back when I was really young, I think. I got it right, like, a few months after it came out, so I was, like, eight, and uh, I remember that um, when I was eight years old, I had some trouble with, like, I remember I had trouble getting past the second level of the game, but, uh, yeah, it's more like trying to, like, test kids' knowledge, but when you get older, this is a very easy, like, simple early learner's game. Not really an early learner's game, but a game more so aimed for, like, the younger kids, but still a fun time, if, especially if you're a fan of the show. I like how Eddie's footsteps make like tracks, like like dust tracks, but yeah. And there we go, we got all three, and now we just gotta switch double D to uh, disable the saw, and there we go. Where we beat the fifth of six, uh, we beat the fifth level of six in total, and we just got one more, and we're done with the speed run. The last one took me 12 minutes, so let's get on to the final level of the game. And by the way, the fifth level was called Nightmare on Ed Street, which is obviously a ripoff or like an homage to Nightmare on Elm Street. And here we go. This is the final level. Ed marks the spot. Uh, the, the plot of this level, Eddie finds some jawbreakers he has stashed away. He's ready to share them with the the other Eds. And they get stolen, and they got to find who did it by, because they uh, had a piece of a map. Um, and we got to find the other pieces to find uh, where the map is. We got three other pieces we need to find. And uh, the first two of the three we have to find, um, we have to... Uh, we have to um, find them in this section of the area. Like, you cannot progress to the next part of the level until you get the first two pieces. Um, yeah, so how to get through um, this portion to get to the next part is we have to um, pretty much uh, get some uh, batteries disabled. Or we got, no, we can't disable them. We have to collect, like, these generator batteries to uh, charge a, um, a lock, like, charge, like, a, a locked code door for the, um, the fence. So we have to do that. Yeah. We gotta switch to the tower of Eddie again to uh, collect it. Let's do so. Yeah, you gotta match them with the right colors, and if you drop, you have to go all the way back over to collect it again. And that's really not fun. But anyway, there is also, you know, you can skip all this by doing the clipping thing again, but still haven't done it yet. I'm sorry. I know I'm pathetic, but anyway. It's really not nice to say about myself. Why am I so self-deprecating? Anyway. And Eddie just fell in the water for some reason. He just did. Because <laughs> the AI is dumb in this game. But Yeah, the AI in this game is really bad. I'm sorry, but it is. Uh, you gotta kill these bulldogs that have nice little pink bows on their heads. It's like Cram Cheese Sona. But... Except without the bow, but she's a bulldog at heart. You know. Corgi Bulldog at its finest. Um... There we go, and um, take this final battery and put it down there to open up the fence. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so we got that taken care of pretty much. Um, the piece. The first of three um, pieces of the map we need to find is right here where Johnny has it, or he's trying to reach it, and we gotta pretty much hit this car over here, and he makes a funny sound effect when you uh, hit him with a car. <laughs> you just make him fly away, it's like Team Rocket from the Pokemon anime, oh my god. Oh, uh, it's funny. Team Rocket blasting off again! But anyway, 
yeah, we now collected one piece of the map. We gotta get one more piece before we can move on to the next part of the level. And this is the second of two levels. This is the second of the two levels in this game that have two parts to it, by the way. So, um, we gotta do. He's just gonna open this door up and we're gonna be able to uh, get through here. Yeah, I like how like they just have like these weird sofas right here that I destroy. And I think we're pretty much in the junkyard area of this game. Yeah, we're in the junkyard. Uh, the junkyard was a pretty cool place in the show with a lot of uh, areas of the cul-de-sac to visit and all. Yeah, the show was very creative. I liked it. And one of the things I... There's two things about the show that I absolutely adore a lot. One of them being its art style with like the show has a really unique art style which I feel like a lot of fan drawings and I died by the way. Yes, yeah, slippery mud, but the art style of the show I feel like is very hard to uh, duplicate and copy because of the fact that like it's so unique with its style and it's so messy yet neat it, but also neat at the same time and it's also ugly but kind of cute at the same time too to where like you just it's it's hard to like really like duplicate it and that's why I feel like also even if you want to do like fan drawings of this I feel like it would be very difficult to do so to emulate it and the second thing I love about the show a lot too is its sound effects and its music like it has a really jazz like soundtrack very um instead of like just using generic copy paste like sound effects it uh I'm, they made a lot of really unique sound effects that you don't usually just find online to just paste in your show or cartoon there's a lot of unique sounds that are weird and crazy, which I love. Now, this is the most annoying part of this game. Jimmy has the second of three pieces of the map. And uh, what you got to do is you got to get a spider egg that's all the way over here. And you have to do a Tower of Eddie ability to do it. And it's really annoying and difficult to do so. But um, a little trick you can do is you can just go by through it with Double D by himself. And uh, quickly go and like, uh, use your slingshot to get all the parts down. And um, to do so, you can do that. But however, and then once you do that, you can just like fall down and then go through on the tower ready to get all of them over there. But the thing that's annoying with, with that is like, if you want to go for like a world record run, at the, the fastest possible way is like doing it perfectly by like having all three there. But it's very difficult, and especially with the tire swings um, going everywhere, it makes it really difficult as well. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kill all these enemies. And when you fall, you do spawn back where you begin because uh, not all three heads were there. And once you do get all three heads over there, you spawn back where the spider eggs, egg is so you don't have to redo all of it again. So it's kind of like a halfway checkpoint. <sighs> yeah, it gets a little annoying and difficult, but it's worth it. <laughs> all right, just go through there. Cool. Yeah, not all the tire swings are annoying. There's like four, but the last one is really tricky because it's kind of like hard to project because he's going in like slanted, the tire swing, but uh, like the the boardwalk you have to walk over is like very straight and it, like, it's hard to like pinpoint when's the best time. So yeah. And now we got the spider egg, which is supposedly a jawbreaker because he wants a, Jimmy wants a jawbreaker, but it's just a spider egg and we're going to traumatize him for life. Like, they always do in the show because Jimmy's usually the one who gets hurt a lot in the show, which is really funny. Um, well, I don't know. Jimmy was a character I never really liked that much. Like, he was alright in most episodes, but there was some he was just a flat-out asshole and, like, very snarky and sneaky and manipulative. So it's kind of, like, justified a little bit. I'm sorry, but it just kind of is for a character. So, yeah, and we just get the cutscene. We now have all the pieces we need to go to the second half of this level, and, um... Uh, instead of having to get all the eds over there, you can easily just um, use Double D to get over there because once you open up the door with Double, there's a door we got to unlock with Double D right over there on the other side of this like a uh, this like little swamp lake area where all the trailer park houses are staying. Just get over there and um, open the door up and we can go. So yeah. And I accidentally grabbed a jawbreaker here. I wasn't supposed to do that. I don't even know why I hit all the crates. It's just coins, but. And there we go. Uh, we can now move on to the second half of Ed Marks the Spot, the final level. All right, and uh, the final um, uh, piece of the map is immediately right here. Uh, we're going to have the second of two uh, Victor the Goat boss battles, boss fights.
Uh, if you want to 100% this game, you have to uh, beat him on the second match right here like five or six times in a row. They're going to ask you if you want to do it again. If you do it six or so times in a row, he'll give you a jawbreaker, which is required to beat the game. So that's why sometimes you see a speed run this game, like you'll see him just like do it on a bunch of times. And I accidentally selected yes to fight him again, so I screwed up my time a little bit there. Yeah, I can pretty much, uh, I'm pretty sure I can go for a sub 40 if I tried this again, if I tried hard enough. There we go. Not going to do that again. And there's a Jawbreaker. And uh, now that we got all the pieces um, of the map, we found out that the Kankers took it because uh, it wrote their names on the map. And now we went in the trailer park and we have to escape them because they're chasing us now. And this is coming to the very near the end of the level. Like once we get done with this section, we'll have the final boss. It's um, a bunch of rooms that we're all timed on. And we have to do some like obstacles in these certain rooms, which kind of like bring all the different abilities together, kind of leading up to the final fight. So that's pretty cool. But we have to do all of them in a certain amount of time. And if you don't, you um, the cankers come and kiss you and you die. You have to. You don't have to start the whole thing over, but you have to restart on the level or the area you were that you died in. So it's not too bad. Okay, not really that bad to be honest. We gotta kill all these dogs first, and we got a bunch of switches we have to uh, turn or a bunch of um, codes we gotta put in for double D. Intriguing. And uh, yeah. We hit the 40 minute mark and we're about to come up on our time because we're about to have the final boss. My, my. Intriguing. Intriguing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My, my. Intriguing. And there we go. We can get through, but we gotta get there before the time runs out. And I fucking ran into the sandbox again. I like how Eddie's body just like kind of like flats, flattens out like a pancake when that happens, but yeah. This is like the second last room of obstacles we have to do, and I almost died there again. Okay, here we go. Open this up. My, my. Intriguing. There we go. And now we gotta switch to Ed and batter Ed our way through this uh, slippery mud. And uh, the final boss is coming up right after this room, so let's go. Here we go, and we got the final boss with the Kanker Sisters. Um, how, this is the final boss of the game. In order to beat him, or to beat the Kanker Sisters, you have to um, collect a trash, grab a trash can with Ed, throw it at the little um, red uh, target spot, and that'll make the uh, electric water turn off. And then you have to batter Ed your way into the to the pillar that's holding up holding up the Kanker Sisters. But you also got to avoid all the red squirrels running around and all the kisses they're shooting at you. Time for some smooching. But <laughs> yeah. All right, so we got halfway done now, and we're almost done with our speed run. Oh my god. I kind of fuck up near the end of this, so... Uh, true words of an extremist feminist, but... <laughs> anyway, and all of them were talking all at the same time, where you kind of couldn't make out what any of them were saying. Oh my gosh. It's like being in a Skype call with my friends. Holy shit. Uh, or a Discord call. No, I'm not. <laughs> Lee, oh my god. And I fucked that up at the end. Yeah, I told you guys I, I fuck up really hard in this last part. Which kind of screws up my time a little bit when it comes to going for a sub 43. But I still did a pretty good time, in my opinion. I really, like, every time I do a run of this game, like, the very end, like, on the last pillar or two, I always, like, screw it up. But anyway. See? I keep screwing it up. Anyway. Yeah, this is the point where I do get it done right now. Alright. Uh, yeah, here it is. This one's gonna get the final blow, and we're about to come up on our time in a few seconds. We're finishing our speed run. And just throw that right here. Do one more final batter red, and boom! We're done with the game. And the final time of 43 minutes and 27.5 seconds, or... I would just say 4327 to be exact because I spent like it took me like about half a second to press time on my computer when I recorded this so uh, yeah 43 minutes and 27 seconds not a bad time here's the ending where uh, the Kanker sisters get married to Ed, Ed and Eddie so yeah and this is the end of the game um, thank you all so much for watching my speed run of Ed, Ed and Eddie the misadventures of the Nintendo GameCube um, for some more advice, if you want to go for the fastest time possible, the PC version of this game is the fastest, but when it comes to the console versions of the game, because this was released on uh, Xbox, 
This was released on the original Xbox, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and PC, and also a, another game on the Game Boy Advance, but it's a completely different game in general. Um, the GameCube version is the fastest, is the second fastest version of this game besides the PC version. So um, if you want to move up to the PC version after this, uh, start on the GameCube. Um, and then just work your way up there. And uh, you can also pull off some more glitches like clipping through walls. Uh, Konosumi's videos can uh, really show you how to do that. Um, so that's it. So thank you all so much for watching this speedrun of Ed Ed the Misadventures, time of 43 minutes and 27 seconds. I've been C3Cord, and I will see you guys next time. So goodbye, everyone.